Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It is after five o'clock, the shop is all shut down and I decided to work on a project. We're gonna bring you guys along. This is my latest acquisition. It is a Easy Go Freedom TXT. It's a fairly nice unit. I bought it from a seed research facility in Oklahoma. This one was inoperable and I figured worst case scenario, I would need to put new batteries in, which I did have to do. And I'm just kind of getting it a little more safe, if you will, to drive around on the roads out here in the country. A lot of the neighbors have these and I really wanted one because they just go whispering past and it's just awesome to country cruise, take it easy. I've already added this flag, I'm trying to get as much visibility as I can. This is just a triangular marker flag. They put these on in like some of the ATV parks and stuff. And I thought it was a nice addition because it kind of whips in the wind and hopefully will alert cars to my presence. I'm also gonna add a slow moving vehicle sign, SMV. That's pretty obligatory. I went with the plastic because the aluminum ones can rattle from time to time. We have some side mirrors and there's a website here. I got all this stuff from Amazon. I will leave links in the video description down below. And then we have a large bubble type or convex rear view that's supposed to go up there. So without further ado, let's go ahead, dive in on the project. I went ahead and unpackaged the convex rear view first because I'm not exactly sure if I wanna put the side rear views on. I think they might block my view a little bit. So we're gonna mount this one up first and see if we like it. Tools you're gonna need for installing the rear view is a quarter inch impact with a Phillips number two bit. They give you these handy, if it'll focus, these handy self-tapping sheet metal screws. I'm sure this is gonna be more than adequate. I was really hoping to mount the mirror to this steel bar across the top here. However, I think I am gonna have to go into the plastic because the holes they give you are not going to run parallel with the top crossbar. So we're gonna try it in the plastic. I really don't like putting holes in a plastic roof like this, but I think it'll be okay. It's just a golf cart after all. And the plastic roof will help give me some vibration dampening oh so slightly. What I am going to do is measure between these two bolts here. They should be centered, find my center point, and then I will just shotgun the mirror at center. I made a mark in the middle. My bolts were 27 inches apart, so I needed a mark at 13 and a half. And I probably could have shotgunned this. You can see there is a uh, plastic form mark right here and right there. It's really not too terribly critical. I am, however, going to use the bar to keep my brackets in line right there and right there. That way we don't have any of the mirror favoring one side or the other. It's just easy to find a good straight line and use it as a point of reference. We have that mounted directly into the plastic. We will see how well that holds up. So far, I really, really like it. I'll try to get you guys about where my eyes are. You can see behind you perfectly. I'm not sure if I want the side rear views. My biggest worry is you can hardly hear vehicles coming up behind you when you're just cruising and I hate to keep rubbernecking 
all the time when you're trying to enjoy yourself. So let's go ahead, get them out of the box, mock them up and see if we like them. I have them out of the package and I already have some holes in the frame that I can use. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount them up. It really won't take very long and I can always unbolt them if I don't like them. And I bought and paid for them, so I might as well. They do come with some sheet metal screws. I'm sure those would work. And they do have some hardware in here that I suspect is metric with 10 millimeter nuts. I'm gonna switch those out for quarter 20 standard hardware because I live in America, so why not? Let's go ahead, get started on mounting these up. I installed the top bolt, just finger tight. I'm gonna take just a regular number two pencil, mark my hole, just like that. I doubt you will be able to see it, but right there is my circular mark for the lower hole. I'm going to hand the camera off to the assistant now, and I will show you center punching the hole. We are using a Starrett self-setting center punch. You don't have to use this. A small drill bit or a regular center punch would work fine. You just line this up on the hole, cam it up into position, and then you push. Then that gives you a perfect little divot for your pilot bit. We are using our small pilot bit. You want to try to maintain the proper angle following the rail here. That way your hole does not shoot out off center. There we go. Now we remove our pilot bit and we switch to our finish size, which is going to be quarter inch. This is what you should be left with. A nice quarter inch hole, front and back. If I can get the camera to focus, then you can just pivot this back down. And if you've done everything right, your bolt should go right through. We have that all installed perfectly. Went off without a hitch. It's a pretty simple installation. We will now repeat the process on the other side. I won't film that because it's just drilling a hole. But so far, I'm liking it, and I can always remove them if I don't like how crowded it seems on the cart. We have the left side, middle, and right side mirror all installed. So far, I like them. It does definitely crowd the front view of the golf cart. I may not keep them on, but now you guys at least will know where to get them and how to install them. I am quickly realizing that the SMV sign is kind of massive on the back of this. I'm going to go ahead and mount it like this, even though I know traditionally they're mounted like that or even upside down like this. I'm going to go ahead and mount it like that because it's blocking quite a bit of the left rear view mirror and I just, more than anything, I want people to be able to see me. They really heck around on these country roads and I don't want to get plowed into the back of. So I'm going to install this for now and maybe I'll go to like smaller reflectors or I've even thought about putting a yellow strobe on top of the canopy. For mounting this, it's just more of the same. I used the factory original hole here and put a mark there and I'm going to drill that and then I will shotgun the top hole and we'll have this mounted up see how it works. We have the SMV sign installed. Again, quarter 20 hardware. It's just easy peasy. And when you sit down in the seat, it is not too intrusive in the left mirror. And it's pretty well hidden by my head in the rear view. And then of course you can't even see it in the right side mirror. That is all the upgrades I'm going to do tonight. I have a couple of more aggressive tires, let's say, coming in the mail. They're just some all-terrains. They're nothing fancy. They're not too aggressive, in my opinion. I'm hoping they don't make the golf cart vibrate 
as it drives down the road. That is not what I want. If they do make it vibrate, I will get rid of those and figure something else out. But that's all the upgrades that we're going to do this evening. If, if you've liked the video so far, please hit the like button and subscribe if you're new. We will check back in once we get our new tires installed. Hello everyone. It has been a few weeks and just today I got the more aggressive SUNF tires mounted up. Got these right off of Amazon. I will drop a link to those in the video description down below. I don't make any money off of that. I just enjoy getting the word out there. These were a half inch wider than the original tire, so there's a quarter inch more sticking out on each side. I was a little worried they would rub, but so far I haven't had any issues. And then there is one upgrade that I had to make, unfortunately, and I will talk about it now. This is the old front headlight, as you can see, and this is my new one. Unfortunately, my niece could not find the brake pedal quick enough, and she decided to attack her mother's fence with my golf cart. With all that being said, I wasn't very impressed with this older headlight. The only thing I do miss about it, I think it was pre-wired for turn signals. My golf cart does not have turn signals yet. I doubt it will ever have them in the small town that I live in. This unit is supposed to be 30,000 lumen, and let me tell you, it is bright. A link to this light will be in the video description down below. I'm going to turn it off and look at the back side of it. This was quite a bit of an install. I had to build this steel bracket out of 12 gauge, and then I mounted the light to that. And my niece, bless her heart, she hit the fence so hard, I'm not sure how the hood is not just completely nuked, that these brackets were bent back at like a 25 degree angle. She really smoked that fence. Moving back to the tires, I will say there is a 10% noise increase compared to the original style front tires that are practically smooth. However, there is a very small, very small creek ford that I do like to go out in and I did not want to get stuck in three inches of sand or get stuck on grass, so I went with these larger tires. One thing I would recommend is one of these Bluetooth speakers. It doesn't have to be JBL brand. I think these are about 80 bucks, but this thing has a crazy runtime. It's waterproof, and it just doesn't give you any fits. I just keep it in the cup holder right next to the garage door clicker. And then you just charge it up every four or five days. I don't use it too often, but it is nice to have. And you don't have any auxiliary wiring to deal with with an actual onboard radio system. I think with all of that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the video. I would like to thank everybody for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.